the biggest cyber threat is they're facing government is, is not from the hacktivists because they generally go after information and try to embarrass organizations and therefore generally don't cause harm to property or harm to, or at least physical property or harm to people. Uh, and then there's the nation states, but the nation states, uh, because they are nation states, follow certain rules. And, uh, and they also are very aware that we, they have consequences for their actions. Uh, with the attribution, we should be able to attribute to who took that action and then take an appropriate reaction to their action. So because of that, they, they are constrained in terms of the activities they could do. Uh, the, the, and then there's the, the criminal element, uh, which is basically out to make money. And, and that criminal element is... Uh, focused on ga gaining the opportunity to get more money, right? And so um, I don't think they're a threat by themselves. I think the, the combination of a terrorist organization who is really uh, doesn't worry about consequences, right, and is has uh, no uh, reason to, to go out and full out, for example, to attack our infrastructures if they can, if they could, and if they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the knowledge to do that. Now, what can, worries me is that the criminal element, which is which would has the knowledge, they have the high end knowledge, they have a, uh, almost equivalent to a nation state in some cases, that high end knowledge, and then the they and they just will do anything for money within limits. And the crim the terrorist organizations who would want to cause physical harm. So I think the combination of a criminal element combined with a terrorist organization gives you the motivation and the means to do something very dramatic to our, to our ecosystem, to our um, critical infrastructures like power, things like that. So that, that's the most one we have to worry about the most. Fortunately, uh, those criminal elements, for the most part, uh, are aware that they also have consequences if they get caught for this, and therefore, so far, we've been very fortunate that, that, that the teaming has not happened. So I think what, what you want to do is defense in depth. What you want to do is you want to have a perimeter protection between your infrastructure and the internet. You, you also want to educate your workforce in terms of making sure the workforce is aware of cyber threats and, and is, for example, is aware of uh, things that they get phishing attacks and aware that if they get a strange looking email, they shouldn't open it up. Uh, so education is very important. I also think that uh, strengthening your, your uh, Environment is very important in terms of, for example, the Allen Pallard has a SANS top 20 list in terms of things, the basic things that you should do to your infrastructure to protect it. Like, for example, you understand the configuration of the hardware you have and the configuration of the software you have and harden that so to protect that. So those, that combination of the perimeter defense, the education, hardening yours is very important. And then I think the fourth critical element is information sharing. So what you have to do is you have to be aware of not only what's going on in your environment, but also what is going on externally. For example, you need to have information sharing that if, if a particular government agency is experiencing an attack and they have the same configuration as you do, you might want to expect that attack. And last but not least is, is I think that what you have to do is you have to protect your data differently. The important data you have to give more security to than, than for example, low, low quality data that's not quite as important. Like obviously a public facing website, you're not f f concerned about loss of information, you're, you're concerned about continuity of the website being up and maybe defacing the website, but you're not afraid of loss of information. So you have to treat data differently. More important data, you protect it with a little bit more care. I think what it is is risk management, the, the, this, and safety is a, is, a, is a relative issue. I think if you look at driving in your car, are you safe in your car compared to what you were 50 years ago? Yes. Do people still get in accidents? Yes. Do still people, people still get injured? Yes. Do they still die? Yes. But in terms of miles driven per accident, number of fatalities, that's gone down, dr dramatically down. And I think what we're going to do with cybersecurity is, again, the same thing. It's, it's a risk management effort. The more, you, the more money you spend on cybersecurity, if you do it well, the better protected you are, and, and uh, you'll be able to mitigate that risk. Will you be able to reduce that risk to zero? No. The other thing you have to worry about is you have to make sure that you protect privacy. So the privacy issues and, and the costs are things that prevent you from being 100% secure. And the only thing that's 100% secure is a computer that's disconnected to the Internet. 
And if, if, you want to, if you can work in that environment where you just work on a terminal and you never put a USB device, then you're 100% secure. Everything else is about risk management.